Rabbi Shimon says, Woe to the man who says that the Torah came to relate stories simply and plainly and simpleton tales about Esau and Levan and the like. If it was so, even at the present day, we could produce a Torah from simplistic matters and perhaps even nicer one than those. So what the Zohar is saying here is if a person takes all of the stories in the Bible literally, it's a problem. Because, I mean, today we could probably have more interesting stories than what was going on there. If the, if the Torah came to exemplify worldly matters, even the rulers of the world have among them things that are superior. If so, let us follow them and produce from them a Torah in the same manner. It must be that all items in the Torah are of a superior nature and uppermost secrets. I mean, basically, if we thought that it was just all stories, I can tell you that with everything that's happening today, we could just put all those stories in the Torah and have a Torah of our own, right? So obviously, there, is, there are deeper secrets and there's a deeper meaning. Come and behold, the world above and the world below are measured with one scale. Israel below corresponds to the lofty angels above. So the people of Israel here are equivalent to the angels. It is written about the lofty angels who makes the winds his messengers. When they go down, they don with the vestments of this world. So when the angels come down to this world, they look like human beings. If they had not acquired the dress for this world, they would not be able to exist in this world, and the world would not be able to stand them. Can you imagine if you could actually see the angels? I think we would all faint if we could actually see everything around us. If, and if this is so for the angels, how much more so is it for the Torah that created these messengers and all the worlds that exist due to it? Once it came down to this world, if it had not donned all these garments of this world, which are the stories and simplistic tales, the world would not have been able to tolerate it. So the Torah and the light of the Creator, when it came down to this world, it had to take the form of the stories because otherwise we wouldn't be able to digest it at all. But that's not just the meaning, the stories, obviously. Therefore, the story of the Torah is the mantle of the Torah. He who thinks that this mantle is the actual essence of the Torah and nothing else is in there, let him breathe his last breath and let him have no portion in the world to come. So the Zohar is literally saying that if someone thinks that the, the clothing, the stories, is the actual essence of the Torah, there's no reason for him to be here and he won't have a portion in the world to come. Therefore King David said, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your Torah. King David actually asked the Creator to be able to open his eyes to see. That is, look what lies under that garment, under those stories. Come and behold, there is a dress that is visible to everyone. So imagine there's a dress that everyone can see. The fools, when they see a person dressed beautifully, who appears to them distinguished by his clothing, do not observe any further. So if someone looks at someone who is dressed beautifully, that's all they need. They judge according to the clothes. They judge him according to his distinguished apparel and consider the dress as the body of the man and the body of the person like his soul. So they think that because the dress or whatever he's wearing is beautiful, the person is beautiful and then his inner soul must be beautiful too. Similar to this is the Torah. It has a body which is composed of the commandments of the Torah that are called the body of Torah. This body is clothed with garments, garments which are stories of this world. So the Torah has the inner and the exterior. The exterior is the, the stories and the internal is the deeper meanings, the Zohar. The ignorant look only at the dress, which is the stories, and are not aware of anything else. They do not look at what lies beneath that dress. Those who know more do not look at the dress, but rather at the body beneath that dress. So for people who are studying actually Zohar, and Kabbalah, we don't look at the stories, we look at what's under the stories, what's the meaning of the stories. The wise, the sages, the servants of the loftiest king, those that stood at Mount Sinai, look only at the soul of the Torah, which is the essence of everything. In the time to come, they will look at the soul, the soul of the Torah, the inner side. Come and behold, it is also like that above. There exists an apparel, so the clothing, a body, 
and a soul, and a soul of the soul. And then it says, Woe to the wicked who say that the Torah is merely a story and nothing more, for they look at the dress and no further. Praised are the righteous who look properly at the Torah. Wine lasts only if it's in a jug. In the same way, the Torah doesn't last except inside of, of the actual stories, the inner part, the Zohar. Therefore, there is no need to look except at what is beneath the mantle. That is why all these matters and all these stories are just garments. They're just clothing to be able to get deeper. So what the Zohar is saying is that the stories are there so that we could actually digest them, but we should go always much deeper, that it's just stories and we need to go much deeper than that. And the next part that I wanted to share with you is the same portion of Balotcha, verse 88. But the wise shall understand. These are the scholars of Kabbalah. It says about them, and they who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmaments. This refers to those that place their effort in the splendor called the Zohar, that is like Noah's Ark, to which are gathered two from a city, seven from a kingdom, and occasionally one from a city and two from a family. What does this mean? That the Zohar is like the Ark, like Noah's Ark. The Zohar is going to save everybody ultimately. That's why we're so, we believe so much in Tikkun Ezra, we believe so much in the Zohar that we want to give it out to the masses. We want to make sure it gets to everybody. And I know Vicky was on the line and I wanted to thank Vicky again. I know Liao thanked her and I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Faye, everyone who's helping us and Brenda, everyone who's helping us spread the Tikkun Ezra. It's so important. And we would like to spread more and more, and we want to thank you guys. And now I'm going to bring my son, Michael. <laughs>